Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Noser Gamer. Today we're going to take a look at the Retro Arcade Space Invaders TV Games Plug and Play System by Jax Pacific, made in 2011. Really like this unit, at least how it looks on the outside. Has a nice menu button that's also a quarter slot button that lights up when you power it on. It runs on four AA batteries and it uses your standard one video, one audio mono sound cable. The unit itself feels very solid. The, the joystick clicks very well. You have nice big buttons as well. I really like the decor, the Space Invaders unit, uh, aliens all on the outside and on the sides here as well. So let's go ahead and take this TV games unit, plug it in my TV and find out how this unit plays. Let's go to the game. The Jax Pacific Space Invaders TV Games Retro Arcade Plug and Play System carries the copyright year of 2011. And when you power it on, you have a pretty nice menu screen that's very easy to navigate. The first game is Alpine Ski, which is a arcade skiing game. And I've never been a big fan of skiing games, so this one didn't do much for me. Next up is Birdie King, a golf game that was originally a trackball game. And the controls don't really work well with this unit. You're supposed to use the A button to increase the distance by holding it down and then the joystick to hit the ball by aiming it in the direction you want to go. But it just doesn't work very well. This game was meant to be played with a trackball and not an arcade stick. It's really puzzling why they included this one. Next up is the popular Bubble Bobble, which is based on the arcade game, not the NES port of the arcade game. The game is fun to play, but unfortunately it doesn't allow you to continue or to play with two players at the same time, of course, and the game was made with two players in mind. Despite this, it's still fun in short bursts. Next up is Chack and Pop, a very interesting single screen maze slash platform game that has quite a unique system of dropping bombs that sometimes you find blowing yourself up in. You might notice some of the same characters from the Bubble Bobble game as well. However, I did not find this game nearly as entertaining as Bubble Bobble. The Fairyland story surprised me. You play a little witch that turns enemies into cakes and then pushes them off ledges to defeat them. It's a charming little game and it's fun in short burst and I actually had a little bit more fun than I thought I would though I don't see myself coming back to this one many times. Next is The Legend of Kage which is based on the arcade game and not the NES port of course. This game was fun but it, once again you can't continue when your game is over meaning that this is a short play session game for me as well. In Puzznek you match identical blocks to each other by moving them and well, it's a puzzle game, and it's nowhere near as fun as a game like Tetris or Bust a Move, so I'm going to pass. Kix is one of my favorite old school arcade games, and it plays fairly well on this system. In the game, you try to cover up as much of the screen as possible by drawing lines without being touched while drawing them. It's simple, addictive, tough, and fun. Space Invaders is, of course, the crown jewel of the system. This version is a color screen version of the original arcade game and plays very well. And it's very tough, but it's still a blast to play. If you're looking for a plug and play unit with the original Space Invaders, this might be the unit for you. In 2-bit, you try to rotate blocks to connect tubes to one another. Again, another puzzle game that is not exactly my cup of tea. Overall, the graphics look very good, very close to their arcade counterpart. I have heard some people say that the sound is not emulated well, but I don't know because I'm not that familiar with these arcade games. But for what they did, I thought the sounds fit the games well. Everything controls well except for the golf game, which really needed a trackball. The unit also allows you to save your high scores or erase them if you so desire. On eBay, used units were selling for about $20 to $25, and new units were selling for about $40, and those prices include the shipping. So what did I think of the Space Invaders plug-and-play system? Well, I really liked Space Invaders, and I liked Kicks, and I liked a little bit of playing Bobble Bobble and Legend of Kage, but overall, it just didn't grab my full attention. I really wish I could continue in games like Bubble Bobble and Legend of Kage. I also wish that they did a better job with the selection. With other games in the Tato library, such as Bust a Move, it really scratches my head why they included some of the games that they did. However, I really like the arcade look of the unit itself. But that being said, outside of an occasional game of Kicks or Space Invaders, I really don't see myself coming to the system that much. So where am I going to rank it? Well, let's see. 
I do like the Ms. Pac-Man plug and play at number six because I'd rather play Ms. Pac-Man and the wonderful conversion of Pole Position and Galaga and Xevious than most of the games on this unit, but I would rather use this than the Wheel of Fortune unit at number seven. So I'm going to make Space Invaders my new number seven plug and play system. Space Invaders, if you find it for a decent price or if you really like Space Invaders, you should check it out. If you enjoy retro related videos, please click the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget you can follow me on Facebook or Twitter as well. Just go to either one and search for The Nosewear Gamer. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I will see you next time on the next episode of The Nosewear Gamer. Take care everybody.